Well, it has been a very, very surprising week for the October 1st to October 8th filing of candidacy for the 2022 presidential elections dito sa province ng Tawi-Tawi. Now, I am basing this on personal experience. Ah. Hindi kasi tayo kasali in any of these political parties or groups and yung reaction ko is based on the typical reaction ng any average Tawi-Tawi yan. You see, a few months before itong filing of candidacy, ang dami na kasi ang mga rumors and speculations that has been roaming about. And yung mga political leaders po natin dito, they have been on the general side very silent about who is running and what under what party. So a few months before coming in nga sa filing of candidacy, your guess is as good as mine. So enough about that. Now let's talk about the facts. Okay, nung starting ng October 1st to October 8th sa filing of candidacy, these are the list of candidates that we know who are running. So this list was gathered from the Comelec uh, Tawi Tawi Facebook page and it covers from October 1 to October 8th uh, filing of candidacy. Now in here is a list of names of candidates or uh, persons who have shown their intent and have filed their certificate of a candidacy for uh, provincial positions. And of course, the House of Representatives. In the position of provincial governor, we have a total of five people running for this position sa province ng Tawi-Tawi. So first off, we're going to start with the incumbent governor of the province of Tawi-Tawi, si Governor Ishmael Mang Sali. Now, he used to be the former mayor ng municipality of Languyan and then ran for the position of provincial governor in the 2019 midterm elections. Now, once you talk about Go Mang, as people are fond of calling him, he is a deeply religious leader. And it's really very apparent, especially if you look at his programs during the month of Holy Month of Ramadan or the Amun Jadid celebrations. And he shall always be remembered because it was during his time na na-complete ang Tawi-Tawi Central Mosque, located dito sa Barangay Pahot. One other observation also, while I was talking with uh, uh, people around town concerning nga si Govmang, naging busy ang provincial capital. Now, according to some people that I have been talking to and through my own observations nga, as I've been checking the capital uh, through the years, usually kapag wala ang provincial governor, then most of the time wala din yung mga heads uh, sa capital. So, transactions is really on hold. Now, hindi naman lagi ganito and hindi naman lahat ng offices dyan sa capital is practicing this thing. Madalas siya and it comes to the point na people are already talking about it. And one more observation that we also had uh, made and people are talking about uh, through the years nga, ang uh, time of people going to the office. Dapat kasi around 8 o'clock uh, in the morning bukas yung opisina but some people are coming at around 9 or 10 o'clock, uh, sometimes hapon pa. But now, try to go to the capital. So, pag weekday, sigurado talagang may tao yan at around 8 o'clock. And kahit wala yung mga head, someone would always be there to accommodate you uh, sa mga offices. So, si Governor Ishmael Mangsali would be running under the Tawi-Tawi One Party or TOP. Next on the list, we also have the candidate for the provincial governor under the party of PDP Laban who is none, none other than the former uh, governor, Governor Sadikul Sahali. Now, si Gov Maas, as everyone who is fond of calling him, used to be the mayor of the municipality of Panglima Sigala before running for the provincial uh, governor position in 1998. After one term running for re-election, he lost to uh, Governor Rashidin Mat Matba in 2001. After Rashidin's one term as a provincial governor in 2004 elections, he won again for the seat of provincial uh, governor and has been there until 2013. So after completing three terms as provincial governor, which ended in 2013, he decided to retire from public office. He later came back again in the political arena in the 2019 midterm elections where he was uh, running against uh, the now incumbent uh, provincial governor, uh, Governor Ishmael Mangsali. Now there are five people running for the position of provincial governor on the 2022 presidential elections. But ultimately the fight is just down to two names. It's Sadiko Sahali and Ishmael Mangsali. Now they have already met in the political arena 
on the last 2019 elections. Now, whether there's going to be a repeat of the 2019 outcome where si Governor Ismael Mangsali would get the win or there's going to be an upset where si Governor Sadiko Sahali would uh, be the new uh, provincial governor, we shall just have to wait and see this coming elections. Now, the next on the list who has also filed his certificate of uh, candidacy for the position of provincial governor is Darwin H. Abdul. Now, he is a neophyte politician and the only thing that I know about him is we used to work together dito sa DPWH uh, a few years ago. Now, he is running independent for the position of provincial governor and concerning whom uh, sino siya and uh, ano yung mga plans and programs that he has for the uh, province of Tawi-Tawi, then we'll just have to wait and see on the campaign period. Now, running for provincial governor next on the list is also another independent, si Kennedy M. Tan. So like the previous person who has also filed his certificate of candidacy, this is also a neophyte uh, politician. So among the political uh, circles, nothing is uh, known much about him also. So this person also will have to wait and see until the uh, campaign period to find out what he has to offer for the province of Tawi Tawi. Last on the list, running for the, uh, ano, who has filed this candidacy for the uh, position of provincial governor is uh, Perfecto Reyes Sr. Now, I believe that he has been running on and off na, uh, through the years. I think the last that I uh, heard about him was, I think, around 2013 when he was running for the position of uh, provincial vice governor, if I'm not mistaken. But even though if he's been uh, running uh, uh, through the years uh, in uh, different positions, nothing really uh, much is known about him. So concerning uh, yung mga platforms and programs, niya, we'll just also have to wait and see uh, on the campaign period. So that's the five names of the people who have filed their certificate of candidacy for the position of provincial governor. So now we'll be switching to the position of the provincial vice governor dito sa province ng Tawi-Tawi. Now the incumbent provincial uh, vice governor, si uh, Vice Governor Tati Kong Ahaja, is on his third term. So that means he cannot seek uh, office uh, of the office of the provincial vice governor again kasi graduating na siya. So it has already been speculations nga uh, coming on the position of uh, provincial vice governor kung sino nga yung upo. So it really came as a, really a surprise uh, dito because people were really speculating as to kung sino. So the best uh, at first they were the speculations were leaning na si uh, Province, uh, ang uh, congressman natin, si congressman Rashidin Matba would be in fact taking this position or another Ahaja would be coming in but uh, things turned out quite differently so there are three people who have filed their certificate of candidacy for the position of vice governor in the province of Tawi-Tawi first off we have Alshid A. Sali of the Tawi-Tawi One Party now Toto as everyone calls him is a uh, Minister of Parliament for the BTA on the MILF side. He is also the Chair on the Committee on Transportation. And he is the son of uh, Provincial Governor, Governor Ishmael Mangsali. Now, I managed to talk to him a few days after he has filed his Certificate of Candidacy. And I really have to admit, I was really impressed. We really haven't talked about anything specific, but generally about the uh, status nga ng province ng Tawi-Tawi, the problems that we are facing, he really has uh, some pretty good plans uh, concerning the province. Now, if Tawi-Tawi would be giving him the chance to serve as the provincial vice governor for next year or not, it still remains to be seen. Next on the list who has filed their certificate of candidacy for the provincial vice governor is uh, the PDP Laban candidate, si Rostina J. Baiting. Now, I know her back on the day nung si Congresswoman Ruby Sahali was still in Congress during uh, those times. And I'm not really sure, huh, but I think she is also the family ng mga Sahali. Now, politically, nothing much is known also about her outside of the municipality of Pangilimasugala. But apparently, uh, kilala siya dyan sa municipality nila. So, she is running under the lineup ng party 
party ng PDP Laban together with uh, Governor Sadiko Sahali and Congresswoman uh, Ruby Sahali. So we're, we'll just have to learn more about her na lang during the campaign period. And the third aspirant who has filed his certificate of candidacy for the position of provincial vice governor is Arnold Y. Akip. So like most of the independents dito, he is also a neophyte uh, candidate, a neophyte politician. Although, yung uh, pamilyang Akip dito sa Tawi-Tawi is a big family also. But nothing much nga is known about him so we'll just have to wait and see uh, on the campaign period. Now lastly, we shall be talking about the candidates for the House of Representatives, yung mga Congress natin. Now everyone was speculating uh, coming into this uh, uh, filing of candidacy na si uh, Congressman Rashidin Matba would uh, be running for election or he should be taking the uh, vice governor position. But as a uh, surprising turn, Congressman Rashidin Matba is not running for any office dito sa province of Tawi-Tawi but has instead uh, gave way and endorsed yung uh, pinsan niya, si Dimsar Sali. Now, according to Vice Governor Aspirant Alshid uh, Sali, uh, this has been a family decision nga. So it was discussed nga between the Matba Sali clan and uh, uh, Congressman Rashidin uh, Matba uh, also supports the decision which is very apparent when he uh, raised the hand nga ng aspirant uh, for uh, Congressman si uh, Dimsar Sali in the uh, filing of candidacy last week. So si Dimsar M. Sali is running under the party of NUP. And currently, I believe he is the municipal administrator for the municipality of Languyan. And he is also the brother of ABC President Board Member Geoffrey Sali. Now, we have three aspirants, those who have filed for the Certificate of Candidacy for the House of Representatives. So, si Tim Sir Sali is number one. Second would be Shepard Regaliana Reyes. So, si Shepard Reyes is also a neophyte politician, but he'd be uh, uh, running under the party of the PDP Laban. Now, I'm not sure, but I believe he would be running under PDP Laban together with Perfecto Reyes Sr., the uh, aspirant for provincial governor under also the PDP Laban. So, it seems that there are two groups uh, ng uh, PDP Laban dito. Yung uh, grupo ng PDP Laban under Sadiko Sahali, and itong uh, PDP Laban Group under Perfecto Reyes Sr. So we really have to wait na lang for the campaign period to clear things up and to find out more about itong mga candidates running uh, for the House of Representatives. And last but not the least, the third aspirant for the uh, House of Representatives who have filed their Certificate of Candidacy is former Congresswoman Ruby Makiso Sahali. Now, without a doubt, ang daming mga supporters ni Ruby Makiso Sahali. And she really is well known even outside uh, the province of Tawi-Tawi. I mean, even I have to admit, uh, before even knowing about the province of Tawi-Tawi, before I even know, got to know this place, nakilala ko na si Ruby Sahali. If I'm not mistaken, the first time I heard about her, I got to meet her was, I think that was 2011, 2012, and she was a provincial vice governor. And that was in Zamboanga City, and one of my colleagues was doing an interview with her, and uh, that's when we got to know her. So the thing about Ruby Sahali is she's very fashion trendy. I think that's the term. So whether she wears yellow or pink, so hindi yan nagbimismatch yung colors. Talagang terno terno talaga yung style na yan uh, sa pananamit. But the surprising thing about her is that she really knows how to interact with people. So whether she meets the person for the first time or meets them on the street or people coming in asking for help or you know just generally sitting down and you know saying hi she really knows how to talk to people and uh, i think that's one of the good qualities ni Ruby Sahali so she first ran for congresswoman in 2013 and uh, she has been up for re-election and lost nung 2019 uh, for the seat of congress against uh, former uh, governor Rashidin Matba so now she's back for the 2022 presidential elections running for the House of Representatives. So whether Tawutawi would give her the chance to serve again 
or give way to another candidate to represent us in the House of Representatives, we'll just have to wait and see at the end results ng 2022 presidential elections. So that's all we have for today. Thank you guys for watching until the end for the Tawi Tawi Early Morning Thoughts episode concerning itong uh, October 1 to October 8 uh, filing of candidacy. I hope you guys have been entertained and informed. And if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button and hit that little notification bell for you to stay updated on any other future content that uh, our channel will be coming up. So once again, this is Jeb Fabian saying magsukul toongan and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.